Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss matter and physical properties. So today's essential question, what are the phases of matter, and how does matter change between phases? Okay, so let's take a quick look at the definition of chemistry. So chemistry is the study of matter, its properties, and its composition, meaning how matter is made up, and the changes it undergoes. Um, and pretty soon we will actually start studying chemistry. Um, chemistry is the study of the stuff that things are made of. And all of the people and all of the things that fill the world involve chemistry in one way or another. Okay, everything you look at, everything that you are, everything that you breathe, the air, the floor, you, your stomach, all of it, it all involves chemistry. Okay. So matter. Matter is anything that has both mass and volume. So, let's talk about what mass and volume are. Mass is the space the object occupies. Okay, so ha, think about, look, at, look around your house. Look at the chair you're sitting on. The volume is how much space that chair takes up. You know, look at, look at your computer or your, your phone, your book. The, its volume is how much space in the world it takes up. Okay? Mass is the amount of matter that an object contains. Okay, so how much stuff makes up that chair, that book, that phone, that computer? Okay, and the more stuff that makes up, it makes up, the heavier it's going to be. So weight is the force that measures the pull of gravity on a given mass. We're going to use weight to measure mass. Okay, so once again, volume is the space something takes up. And mass is the amount of matter that an object contains. The more mass an object contains, the heavier it's going to be. Okay? All right. Let's talk about the physical states of matter. The, the three most common states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. There is also the state plasma. So there are actually four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Um, but we're going to focus on solid, liquid, and gas, because that's, that's what we commonly run into while on Earth, which is, at this moment, where we all live. All right, so let's talk about solids. Solids, the shape and size are not dependent on the container the solid is in. Okay, so if you think about that, if I were to take a rock and put it in a cup, would the shape of the rock change because I put it in a cup? Would the size of the rock change because I put it in a cup? No. So that means that a solid has a fixed volume. Okay, the amount of space it takes up in the world, it doesn't change. It's the amount it takes up. It also has a fixed shape. That rock is going to be rock shaped no matter if I put it on the floor, if I put it on my table, if I put it in the cup. Okay, so it doesn't change. So solids have a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Okay, and Particles, we're going to talk about what these particles are in a couple days, but for right now, the things, the particles, they're, okay, atoms and molecules. So these things that make up a solid are closely packed together, and they're held tightly, so they have a very rigid structure. Okay, so um, next slide shows a quick example of what a so Here's my rock in a cup, I suppose. So um, these little bubbles right there are, is, are the particles that make up the solid, or, or really it's the atoms. Okay, and these guys are all hooked together. So I'm gonna put little, little hooks, okay? They're all hooked together real nice and tight. Um, and we'll talk about this more later. But being, being that they're all hooked together, all atoms, all particles move. Okay, but these little guys, since they're all hooked together, they vibrate. They can't do much more than vibrate. Okay, so we say that they have low energy. They can't really do much. All right? So that is a solid. Okay, the next state of matter is liquids. For liquids, shape is dependent on the container it is in, but size is not. All right, so example. I have, I take some water and I put it in a cup. So what shape is it now? Well, it's cup shape. What if I now take that water and dump it on my table? What shape is it now? It's going to flatten out and it's going to kind of be table shape. Okay, so it, it's, it's, its shape depends on where the liquid is. 
the, um, the size, the amount of space it takes up in the world is not, it does not change, okay? So, um, example, if I take a cup of water, it's shaped like a cup and it's, the cup is full, there's that much volume of water, a cup of water, okay? The size, the amount. I now dump it on the table. The shape has changed, but isn't it still the same amount of water? Yeah. So what we say about liquids is they have a fixed volume. Okay, the amount of space it takes up in the world, whether it's, it's flat and thin or, or cup shape or it's like skinny and tall, the, the, the volume doesn't change. The amount doesn't change. But they have what's called a variable shape. Okay, the, it, it, it'll change shape depending on what container it's in. Okay. So particles of a liquid are in contact with each other. So again, we're talking about these, these atoms, these molecules that we're going to spend a lot more time talking about. But they have freedom to move. Okay, so they're connected like, sort of like um, the solids, but not as tightly. So um, they have what we call a more fluid structure, and they can take on the shape of the container. So here's an example of a liquid. I'm going to draw little connections again, but what you'll notice, so here's my little connections, but you'll notice they're connected more like a chain. Okay? So if I took this and dumped it out, so I dump this, what we're going to have now is we're still going to have our atoms, our particles, but now they'll be flat. And I'm out of room, so it's going to look like that. Okay? These guys can move better than the, sh than, remember, all particles like to move. And these have a little bit more freedom to move. They flow. They can kind of wiggle. They have a little bit more freedom. So we say they are like medium energy. They have a little bit more energy than the solids. Okay. So there you go. There's a liquid. Let's now talk about gases. Gases. Gases are really pretty cool because both shape and size or, or volume are dependent on the container the gas is in. So gases have both a variable volume and a variable shape, variable or changeable. So think about this. I could take all the air in your room, the, whatever room you're sitting in right now, I could suck it all out. And I could put it in a little teeny tiny box that would fit in my pocket. Okay? And then I could go into, I don't know, take them all the way to Montclair High School, and I could open up the little box in my classroom, and, and the air in that little box would fill up my whole classroom and be classroom sized, okay, and classroom shape. So gas particles have both variable shape and variable volume, and this is because gas particles are not in contact with each other, and they can move freely, and they do. Particles or atoms are really, really hyper. Okay, they move around all the time, and they're not. And the gas particles are not connected, so they go. They take as much space as they want. They don't really like to hang out next to each other if they don't have to. All right. So here's the particles of a gas in this container. If I open this container, the particles would take up the whole screen. Okay, they'd spread out as far as they can. Okay, and if I could get them off the screen, they would take up as much space as I, they could. Okay, so particles of a gas. Um, can move freely. They are not connected. I'm not going to draw any connections there. So if we talked about their energy, what kind of energy would you say a gas had? I'm going to say it's high energy. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. High energy. All right. All right. Let's talk about physical properties and then physical changes. So a physical property is any property of matter that can be measured without changing its chemical nature. Okay, so we're not going to change how something is made up, what it's made up of. We're just going to change how it looks. So examples of physical properties are its mass, its volume, its density, its color, its texture, its melting point, its boiling point. Okay, so physical properties are things you can taste, touch, feel, see, describe, but not how something's made. Okay, so physical changes, if when we do a physical change, it involves only the physical properties of matter. The chemical makeup of the matter is not affected. So when we're talking about physical changes, it can involve things like changes in state, like going like from a solid to a liquid, a liquid to a gas. Think about water, 
right? It could be ice cube, it could be a glass of water, it could be steam. It's still water, either no matter how you look at it, just solid, liquid, or gas, okay? Um, it could be changes in shape, changes in volume. Some examples of physical change are the melting of ice, the evaporation of water. I could cut paper. I mean, it looks different, right? It's a half a sheet or a quarter sheet or whatever, but it's still paper. I could bend metal. I could dissolve salt and water. But what's the water going to taste like? What's it going to be? It's going to be salty water. Okay, I didn't actually change the salt or the water. I still have H2O. I still have salt, which is NaCl. It just doesn't look the same. All right? All right. So the physical change I want to focus on is physical changes in state of matter. Okay, so, um, and of course, this is chemistry. There has to be fancy terms for everything. So to go from a solid to a liquid, what you're doing is melting. Okay, and to go from a liquid to a gas, what you're doing is evaporating. That's the, the official term. Um, and in some matter can go directly from a solid to a gas, and we call that sublimation. All right, and let's talk about energy really quick um, when we're talking about states of matter. So if you guys remember, um, a solid is low energy. A liquid is medium energy. And a gas is high energy. Okay, uh, energy. I can't get that Y. There it is, sort of. Okay, so here's the deal. What do you think you need to do to get a solid to melt into a liquid, going from low energy to medium energy? How about to go from a liquid, which is medium energy, to a gas, which is high energy? For all of these, you need to add energy. And you can add that in the form of heat. There are other ways to add it. But all of these changes, going from a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a gas, you're going from a lower energy to a higher energy state, so you need to add energy. Okay? We can also go the other way. We can go from a gas to a liquid, which is called condensation. You're condensing. You can go from a liquid to a solid, which is freezing, and in some matter can go directly from a gas to a solid, and we call that deposition. All right, and once again, um, a solid is what kind of energy? We've got low energy, medium energy, and the gas is high energy. All right, so what do you think I need to do to go from a gas, which is high energy, to a liquid, which is medium energy? or from a liquid, which is medium energy, to a solid, which is low energy. What do you have to do? You need to lose energy. Okay? So to go, to go from all of these changes in matter going basically back to the left, going from gas to liquid, liquid to solid, you're losing energy each of the way. And that's it for today. We are done.